Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you about this film. Um, maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to Lola and the Sea. Tell us a bit about what people can expect from this film. A story about family, about um, family relationships, issues between a father and her daughter, which is a transgender girl. And they have to make some trip to the sea in Belgium. And of course, it's a, it's a physical journey, but it's also an emotional journey. <laughs> And like you say, there's so many different things going on in this drama. In some respects, it can seem quite a, a simple story, but there's so many things that come out, both in the relationship between father and daughter, um, finding out things about themselves, finding out things about each other. Um, what was the inspiration for this story? And, and why did you want to commit it to, to the big screen? Well, <clears throat> there were the two things that lead me to to write that story one is more intimate it's about um the feeling about being a teenager who has to 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 fight for finding herself a place uh in the world in the society i felt quite the same as i was when i was younger too um i had to yeah to struggle with some adults worlds <laughs> issues something like that and i really wanted to to take that energy uh, back and put it in a character and in a film um, because i think it's a very important period of life for a human being and where you have to 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 say uh, who you are you're trying to 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 elaborate who you are and, and say it to the world. And the other um, part was more political. Um, so I wanted to, to talk about um, a transgender person, actually here a girl, because I had the feeling that uh, stories and films about um, transgender person were still uh, written in a certain way of thinking, which is the character is all what is always um, like a victim has issues in inner issues and not e problems with the outside world, which I wanted to 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 work on because I really wanted to 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 say to the to people and to the society that we all have um, a responsibility in the well-being of of human beings and there especially with uh, minorities so um i felt that i needed to do that so um that's why also i, I decided to to cast a, a transgender girl to to for the part of lola um and of course the idea of of talking about all that that specific um topic um in a in a in a family uh, story was a way to to talk to as many people as possible mm. and you have got a fantastic cast and and you know right at the center of it kind of got uh, on the one hand, kind of a veteran of the screen in, in Benoit, and then, like you say, um, you cast Maya in, in the other role. Now, why was it, as you say, so important to have that representation? Because I suppose definitely in Hollywood, this still seems to be that ongoing debate. I know recently um, there was talk about, um, was it the Dutch girl, Eddie Redmayne, saying he regretted playing Playing yeah. that role. So there's still those discussions going on. So why yeah. do you think it's so important to get that representation right? And were you taken aback by just the, the brilliant chemistry and, and the push and pull that goes on between the two characters, you know, led by those two actors? Yeah, I think this, the, the question of um, what can an actor do and not do is something that is um, always in movement. I don't think there is a, a a definite definitive answer about that. I think it it depends on the the the, the period and the, the 
the culture, the society. And I think I, I have the feeling that nowadays we have to work on visibility because, you know, uh, we are more and more talking about um, um, min minorities, which is a very good thing, but you cannot talk about something that you are a community that you are not from and not um, integrate this community in your work. For me, it, 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 it felt uh, not right. So this is why I, I, I needed to, to, to do that because I wanted to, to, to try as possible to, how can I say that? If you, if you, if you show more and more trans people to, 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 to the audience, the audience uh, is going to get used to that kind of story and that kind of, of, of people, because I think, of course it's political, but it's also artistic. I, I think it's important and beautiful to, to, to film um, a trans body, a trans uh, face, uh, to record a tr uh, the, the voice of a trans person. I think it's really beautiful. It's important to show that we have a, spe a large spectrum of human beings. So, uh, because the representation that we've got in cinema, in literature, in, in TV is quite always the same. So, I have a privilege being a director. And so, I'm trying to use that to to work on, on that issues. Mm -hmm. I just realized I said the Dutch girl instead of the Danish girl. That was the film, sorry. Yeah, Danish girl, yeah. Danish yeah. girl. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about is just kind of the look and feel of the film. It felt like, for example, the locations were very important. Um, the way you use lights, you know, we kind of in the dusky streets of Belgium, when you kind of go to the, the private club where they're staying you know, and there's the kind of the red glow of the lights there but also the soundtrack, um, which kind of threads through, sometimes it's playing on the radio, sometimes from, you know, um, the girl's late mother's uh, iPod. So could you just tell us a little bit about the way the film's put together and how you wanted that to help tell your story? Yeah, I've, the thing is, I, I, I didn't want it to, to, to make um, a film visually that was going to be too, 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 too dark or too um, close to the story, which is, I mean, the story of Lola is, is, is quite difficult. She's a, a, a young transgender girl uh, living in a shelter. Uh, a mother just died from cancer. A father kicked her out from the house, so it's heavy. And I wanted to, to make the story and visually more, um, Right, can we say that with, with a lot of color, you know, to, to work against that uh, heaviness. So I wanted something, uh, I wanted to make a film, a pop film, like with a lot of colors, um, um, popular music, um, a lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, sun when it was possible because we are still in Belgium, so sometimes it's difficult, but we <laughs> We try to, to catch some nice lights or to recreate it. But um, yes, I, I have the feeling that um, when a lot of movies are, when they are uh, um, talking about that kind of, of, of stories, they are more in a documentary way of um, filming. Um, and I wanted something more large um, and this is why I, I choose to to use well you know the mother is still is still um, in the store in the story even though she, she she's dead so there is the this iPod um, thing and some yeah I wanted to 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 bring a bit of poetry a bit of mm. something above uh, life I don't know mm. I don't know if it makes sense in English, like, but... I know what you mean, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I guess, you know, just finally, what do you hope that people will take away from watching the film? Because uh, like you say, it kind of starts maybe at a different point than we're used to seeing with a lot of LGBT films. You know, sh she's already quite sure of 
who she is and it is more about this relationship with her father and there's a lot going on with her father him kind of having to come to terms you know he's maybe a kind of study in toxic masculinity or, or however yeah. you want to put it so there's so many layers to it what do you hope that people will ultimately take away from from watching it um i hope that people are going to 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 think about the power they have on on other people's life um as i was saying um of course this character the father philip is um is someone that starts with uh, uh like a point of view very uh, like this and he opens uh it a bit more and more during the the, the story and the journey um for me, I don't know, it's kind of a metaphor of the society, you know, you are very closed minded and you have to op open yourself to, to, to other people, to other way of living your life. So I hope and, well, for example, I, I saw a lot of straight white guy of 60, 65 years old watching the film because their neighbor or their wife bring them to to <laughs> to the movie and at the end of the film they were like crying about the the life of a transgender girl and they never heard about transgender issues so that kind of feeling is 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 great for me because i i, I have the the i have the feeling that we 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 made something good for for yeah i don't know the society the minorities and and maybe they will they will have a, another way another way of watching transgender and minorities people issues so something like that <laughs> and i saw that Maya, in fact already won uh is it like you say the belgian oscars um a belgian yeah. oscar for, for for her performance. So what does that kind of recognition, you know, both for you as a filmmaker, but on behalf of, you know, giving a platform to, to an actress like that, what does that mean to you? And what do you hope for the trajectory of this film from now on? Of course, it's great um, because it's the first time that a transgender actress uh, wins something like that. I mean, in Belgium, probably in France too. So, it's it's a huge step, um, but I still have the feeling that the the, the world of cinema is a bit um, stuck to some ideas about what you, can you give to a transgender actress. She 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 I think she mostly have proposition of uh, trans characters, which is not that good to my perspective, um, but. I hope it will uh, go to, 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 to something new, to something bigger. But we have to, to be patient, of course, because the society um, changes, but <laughs> not that fast. But it, of course, it's good. It's good because we, I, I mean, the, 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 the industry recognize our, our work and the fact that it's kind of a, um, uh, a bet to 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 give uh, um, such huge character and part to 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 a girl that was uh, doing her first step in front of a camera. And can you quickly tell us what you might be working on next? Do you already know what your next project or film will be? Um, I'm yeah, I'm writing on a, a new script right now, which is an adaptation of a French novel called Nino dans la nuit, Nino in the night. Um, it's about youth people in Paris struggling with uh, again again society and and work and things like that. It's really powerful and beautiful, and I'm quite happy to 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 work on, on that, on that characters, because there are a lot of nice characters. Um, and I hope we are going to get some money to make it soon, <laughs> but I'm still writing right now. So let's do that first. <laughs> yeah, indeed. 
Well, it's been absolutely fantastic to speak to you. Thanks so much for sharing all that with me and best of luck with this film and on future projects. Thanks so much. Thank Have you. a speech to you, Laurent. Nice to meet you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Good evening. Thanks. Bye.